Hello there guys and welcome back to the channel. So Morningstar got a boost recently with the release of Guillotine 2099, which is essentially Morningstar rehash anyways, just in a robot form. But that's besides the point. Basically, there is a synergy with Morningstar. The more souls you have, the more increased your critical rating is. And I wanted to check out the damage Morningstar is going to be able of delivering and whether it's something that potentially could be really powerful because uh, with all the kings that Morningstar has, she really is a usable and like a really sturdy and uh, definitely kind of like a cult champion because she has quite a big of following of players. And I wanted to check out how much better she gets with the synergy and what kind of damage she puts out. I'm not going to draw too many conclusions in today's video. Uh, I'll leave that up to you guys. Uh, but this is going to be more about showcasing uh, how she feels now and what she does now and what are the numbers she, that she provides. So basically I'm running Guillotine, Morningstar, kind of like a uh, Mephisto, typical the synergies. Also threw in Heimdall there just because why not you get not only chi death but you also get that uh, precision buff and the first fight in this quest which is six to one is this kamal khan uh, so this entire path is going to be with cosmic so it's also going to get to fight in class advantage and she has pilfer active though so that is the reason why she constantly got so much power all the time and uh Basically, at this point, I have captured the soul. I just need to finish out the fight. I need to kind of like work around the life cycle node. So as we all know, the easiest typical way to work around life cycle would be to kind of like throw a heavy attack and then drop a level three. Uh, but there are plenty of other ways around if you're kind of crafty with your timing. Now, I will be making quite a few mistakes in today's video. I didn't have too much time to record the actual footage. Uh, but there we go. Uh, down goes Kamal Khan. And that didn't take us too long. 55 hits. Now we're going to move on to the next fight i think in the next fight i'm gonna get slapped the most because like twice or three times i'm actually gonna try and punish uh, miss marvel's heavy attack with my own but there is just not enough reach and this is not one of those situations but i seem to have problems learning that and i'm gonna try and do the same thing again but either way that's part of the plan because we also wanted to showcase morningstar's heal so for those of you who do not know, Morningstar basically works on souls and uh, she can capture the soul via her level 3, she drops a level 3, she starts capturing the soul and then you need to deal enough damage to the opponent uh, and then you kind of complete the capture process. You will also capture the soul if you finish the fight with level 3, just a small kind of like FYI hint there. Uh, but basically each soul you gain, she unlocks new abilities and by the time you get to 5 and that is the maximum of souls you can get she's basically a tank she has insane block proficiency and blockable level twos lifesteal goes unstoppable on her special attacks and just a whole bunch of kind of like cool abilities and if she is fully ramped she's insanely good champion for so much of the content the only problem Monixar really has is that the ramp up process is arguably pretty much the most cost intensive in the entire game because dropping the level threes and then capturing those souls and without the souls she doesn't do as nearly as much damage as a uh, majority of the champions do and that is quite painful and long and you do need to be dedicated to this champion to be able to do that in kind of like high-end content. But that being said, once she is ramped up, she's quite insane. She's extremely sturdy. You get this insane uh, perfect block chance. You get uh, this insane heal and so much more. And so right here we are at four souls. We are just uh, kind of struggling a bit to finish out the second fight. So basically at the next fight, as soon as we capture the soul, we can start healing because the fifth soul is the one that gives us that uh, lifesteal. At the same point, we can definitely see that we are critting uh, quite often at this point. Um, I'd say we're critting more often than we're not. Unfortunately, before that, I didn't really seem to get too lucky with my level 1 crits. Uh, but then again, that being said, if the level 1 crits, you get like additional 12k energy damage per hit and there are three hits so you can do some really really strong level ones and this is just at a rank one six star so thereabouts the same strength as a rank four five star morning star so that wouldn't even be a maxed out champion at this point and she's definitely cutting through these opponents fairly efficiently uh the, any damage that we have really taken was uh, due to fault of my own not the champion uh because we do have a bit thick head occasionally 
Anyways, now we're dropping the level 3 in order to capture the last soul. And as soon as that's done, basically we're finished with our ramp up. So if you do have a guillotine synergy, it takes three fights to fully ramp up Morningstar. If you do not have guillotine synergy, it takes four fights to fully ramp up Morningstar. And that is a uh, quite a lot in my opinion and that is also quite unfortunate but it is the way it is uh there are huge upsides to playing Morningstar and there are definitely huge downsides and those initial couple of fights are incredibly big downsides probably in near future i should also do kind of like a direct comparison video uh how many hits it takes for instance to take down opponent x with one soul two soul three souls four souls and five souls and uh, then compare the numbers with and without the guillotine synergy because on paper it definitely does seem like a fairly significant damage increase now in reality i can't really say that i was blown away by the damage i knew morningstar ramps up to decent amount of damage for sure her heal everything else is there but the big difference should have been that synergy and uh, i'm sure it does help quite a bit but currently it's fairly difficult to kind of uh, notice it straight away i mean like i'm definitely critting probably more so than often but again we're uh, the entire level one we didn't have a single crit again and now for the second time in a row again we pretty much didn't crit at all so obviously there is a rng chance and diminishing returns and all that uh, but it did not feel as kind of like strong as i thought it would feel uh let me know what kind of impression you guys are getting when you are watching this video how do you guys think uh is that kind of like damage increase fairly uh viable noticeable do you have morningstar have you checked out this synergy but at the same time we're just gonna focus on finishing off this fight now i do make a small slip up here and she actually tags me with the last hit of her level one uh, but uh, Morningstar is like super tanky, so we hardly care. Plus, we have that uh, lifesteal available to us. So even though we're at 80% at this point, uh, we're really not bothered, to be honest. Like, now we're at 88, a couple more hits in the fight, and we're just going to keep on healing up. That armor break is also helping us heal a bit here, uh, because willpower reasons and stuff, right? And uh, now, obviously, this Captain Marvel is fairly easy with pretty much any mystics though i have to admit i uh, just can hit her block and that's about it she's gonna go down uh, to a two-star mystic if you play well enough uh, she has that really huge inbuilt penalty against any mystic champions so here i bait out that level one once again i'm gonna drop my level one and i'm gonna be kind of struggling to finish out this fight to be fair uh because it's a lot to do with my own kind of mistakes and mistiming things and maybe getting unlucky or with some hits there not critting so on and so forth and barely running out of the time i definitely could have played this better i have to admit uh, but still at the same point uh we're just kind of like chilling at our close to max health range we don't have too much to worry about now at this point we did get cornered though so i figured uh, I'll just push the Captain Marvel to level 2 and take all the hits in block and they hardly did any damage. That is another reason to love Morningstar, that a block is so useful and so huge and even against stacked opponents it just absorbs so much punishment and so much damage. Now we have the last lane left uh, on this path which is Ronan, then we're going to jump over to Dormammu and we're also going to deal with the final boss. So this time at the beginning of the fight, I do activate the Heimdall synergy. I didn't forget it this time. And uh, that was a good level 1. So you can see that we took off 25% uh, of Ronan's health basically with that level 1. And we're going in for another one and another 3 crits and he's below 50%. So this fight, I have to admit, like the opponent's going down extremely quickly. We're 23 hits in and the Ronan was already below half. Now another level 1, but unfortunately not a single crit there. Uh, but still at the same point, uh, yeah, Morningstar is uh, putting in some work here. This was, I think, the first kind of fight where I noticed that I just uh, dropped two level 1s and that opponent was already below 50%. So the damage increase seemed noticeable in this, this one, but it kind of really depends whether you get lucky with your crits on special 1, because the damage difference... Uh, on your level one when you crit opposed as of when you do not crit it's quite insane uh it scales kind of like 
hugely depending on the base amount of damage you're able to do with your uh, base damage and then that energy damage can differ so much and now we have Dormammu and uh, I actually kind of glanced over the fact that this is such a horrible matchup for Morningstar because uh, inadvertently she does trigger a lot of buffs because of her soul, she always goes unstoppable whenever you drop a level 1 plus heavy attacks give you those power gain buffs and that basically means you have a lot of Dormammu degen food unfortunately plus uh, this known has like brute force so I'm constantly losing all of my power and by the time I realized that pretty much only way I could walk out of this fight is not throw my special attacks, it was a bit too late that Dormammu did not want to throw any of his special attacks. And uh, yeah, this was in fact like a really horrible matchup for Morningstar. And I'm slowly but surely just kind of gonna drop dead in a second but since we made it so far i figured i might as well finish off the video with something interesting and i'm gonna take in guilty in 2099 i'm gonna finish out this fight against this big uh Dormammu, and then we're gonna check out uh, how guillotine 2099 which essentially is kind of like a morning star reincarnated anyways right so i'm still not cheating by showing her in this video uh will do against the final boss because uh, there are also a couple of kind of like interesting uh things you can do in the that final fight i will make some mistakes there as well but uh at the same time it's gonna be quite interesting i suppose either way now we need to focus a task at hand uh we just kind of need to finish this fight off with a level three in order to carry our over 100 of our combos and that is what we're kind of slowly but surely are getting to now one of the easiest ways how to bait out special dice from Dormammu when he doesn't want them to be kind of like thrown is after parry just stay still and uh, wait for that stun duration to expire without backing off I noticed that that seemed to be working so much better for me and I did not have the problems I had in the previous fight while I was using Morningstar and I was much more successfully getting out all of the level 1s from Dormammu by just sticking close to him uh, for the entire parry duration. But anyways, now that we did finish that fight off, uh, we are moving on to final boss, which is obviously Symbiote Supreme, with life cycle, with all sorts of fun stuff, and we're just going to be taking in that guillotine and checking out how many hits it will take us uh, to knock down the Symbiote Supreme. Now, I should have activated my pre-fight abilities because that nullified the beginning of the fight and nullified the armor and at the same time i just took quite a chunk of damage so i probably would have been better off activating both of the pre-fight abilities so i do not have that armor buff on myself uh, but you know it's not that big of a deal now the big thing why i did not want to activate my pre-fight abilities was the level one because uh, that actually gives a really solid power control and if i'm able to control the power so well at this point i could just start kind of like spamming my heavy attacks and uh yeah there was not much uh symbiote supreme could do now the mistake was uh, building up to level three kind of like this early in the fight because uh, now i do not have access to my level one anymore and uh, that will kind of come back to bite me in the bottom because at this point obviously even though i'm doing much more damage i have no way to control symbiote supreme's power and that is uh, somewhat annoying so i'm just kind of trying to rush to the finish line which we will get to and either way uh, that will be pretty much it for today's video so do let me know what you guys think of the guillotine 2099 synergy with morningstar uh have you tried it yourselves um uh, do you find it useful? Do you like it? Uh, do you see huge difference or not? And uh, let me know whether you want to see some more videos of Morningstar damage comparison with and without that synergy or anything else. Uh, but that will pretty much do for today. I hope you guys like the video and I'll see you guys soon. Laters!